Hi, this week we'll be taking a quick look at the extend loop function in SoundThread and how it can be used to create process music. If you're new here and you're wondering what SoundThread is, I'd recommend checking out the intro video that's linked below. The extend processes in the composer's desktop project are designed to make sounds longer, primarily by repeating sections of audio. There are several different processes in this category, but today we're going to look at one of the simplest, which is extend loop. This process can be used in many different ways, but one interesting way to use it is to layer these transformations to create process pieces. Process pieces gained significant popularity in Western music in the mid-20th century, and they were key to the creation of genres such as minimalism and ambient music. If you are unfamiliar with process pieces, I am sitting in a room by Alvin Lussier is an excellent introduction, as the piece itself describes and outlines the process used. However, in short, process pieces are pieces of music where the composer designs a system, called a process, that either structures or transforms sounds. The piece itself is then created by running some material through the process. The process can involve randomness and chance, but it does not have to, and similarly this could involve electronics or be purely acoustic. While the composer has designed the system and the material that is run through it, they do not exactly know what the resultant piece will sound like until the process is run. Before we jump in to a musical example of using the extend loop process, I thought it might be helpful just to get a feel for how it works and what it does. And often with these extend processes, I think the easiest way to get to grips with what they're doing to a sound is to run speech through them, something where you can recognize where you are in the sound file to get a feel for how it's moving through it. Um, so what I have here is just a very simple bit of text where I tell you what we're doing. It sounds like this. This is a demo of the extend loop function in the composer's desktop project and sound thread. And I have run this through the extend loop function. Here I have it set to start at zero, which is just the very start of the sound file. So this is going to start at the start of the sound file and move it all the way through to the end. I have a loop length of a thousand milliseconds, so one second, which means that it's going to cut out chunks that are one second long and a step length of 200 milliseconds. So the way that this will work is it will cut out a chunk that is one second long. It will play all the way through that chunk. It will then move forwards in the file 200 milliseconds and cut out another segment that is one second long and play all the way through that then we move forwards by another 200 milliseconds and so what you're going to hear is kind of repeating audio but it's not repeating exactly the same each time it's moving forwards through the file each time it repeats and so we get a little bit less of the start of our last repetition and a little bit more on the end and it's going to sound like this this is a, this is a demo. This is a demo. This is a demo. Is a demo of the demo of the demo of the extend of the extend of the extend loop the extend loop extend loop func end loop function loop function. You get the idea, uh, and this is really useful as an extend function, particularly if you're working with material that is fitting into beats and bars, because we can define exact rhythms, but we can also create really interesting processes, particularly if we look to layer different extend loop functions together with different loop lengths and different step lengths, we'll get very different results. So if I change my step length here to 500 milliseconds and we run this, it's going to move through the file a lot faster than it did before. This is this is a demo the demo of the ex of the extend extend loop fun loop function in the compo in the composer's desktop his desktop project project or if I were to set this to something really small let's say 10 milliseconds we're going to end up making a file that's very long uh, I'm going to make my loop length a little bit shorter let's say 500 milliseconds and we're going to run that this 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 here is a thread that I have put together using these extend loop processes. And this looks reasonably complicated, but I assure you it's a lot simpler than it initially seems. However, the results of this are anything but musically simple. This is designed around this short, very simple piano melody that plays at 120 beats per minute. And it sounds like this.
Now this is a very resonant piano sound with an awful lot of reverb on it, like probably too much reverb. However, the extend loop processes are going to kind of loop and glitch that reverb and resonance and make it a kind of rhythmic characteristic in the final result. So this thread is made up of four different extend loops. They're all receiving the same input sound. The only exception is this fourth one where the input has been pitch shifted up an octave. The only reason for that is just to give some tonal variation and some pitch variation into this loop. Now, each of these extend loop processes has been set to different loop lengths and step lengths. Uh, and these have been timed to fit within 120 beats per minute. So in 120 beats per minute, a quarter note is 500 milliseconds. So here we have a one bar loop, here we have a two bar loop, here we have a one bar loop, and here we have um, like a triplets loop. And the step lengths of these are different. So here we're stepping by one beat each time, one quarter note, here we're stepping by a bar each loop, here we're stepping by an eighth note each time and here we're stepping by an eighth note triplet. I have also pitch shifted two of these down an octave and changed their speed by half which means that we then also have these kind of two bar loops coming out of each of these two speed in semitones and the result of this is a really quite complex musical output where we get different rhythmic loops layering, shifting and phasing over the top of each other to produce something that is significantly longer in length than the original but also significantly more interesting to listen to than the original but still fits into 120 beats per minute and so we could take this back to our DAW and layer it with other sounds that are also running at 120 beats per minute and it sounds like this. This week's development update is just a really quick one as this week I've mostly been focusing on bug fixes and very small UI tweaks. So there's not a lot of really interesting stuff to show you. Just quickly, a massive thank you to everyone on Discord who's been giving me bug reports on the latest development build. If you'd like to join in on that, there is a kind of pre-release of the next update up on Discord right now. Uh, and there's also some discussions about potential future features and things like that that you can get involved with. Just to kind of show you a few things that I have been working on, I've been adding some improvements to the input and output file. Uh, so now if we load things in, let me just find a sound file really quickly. Uh, we now get the name of the file up at the top of the node. We have the length of the file, and if we select something, it will give us the timings of what we've selected. I've also been working on implementing a few more keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so now Control F, for example, will open the search menu. You can type and search in here. So if I'm looking for a speed change, I can do that. This can also be navigated now with the tab key, and you can hit enter to create the one that you have selected. Just just trying to kind of make it a little bit quicker to work with and a little bit more user friendly. Alongside that, I've just been adding a few extra processes and kind of getting ready for the next release, which should be hopefully next week. And next week's video should be a demo of the features of that, assuming that I don't get delayed and find some massive bugs. So that's all for this week and I will show you more next week. <laughs>